Come meet with Christ, brothers and sisters. As we come from the center and to the margins of the world, come people of all cultures, all ages and interests, just to come and to listen to what God is saying to you. Come and receive the gift of God that he gives for free. And that is especially the gift of salvation. You don't need to buy, you don't need to go for anywhere to get it, besides giving your life to Christ. So I just want to urge you, brothers and sisters, just to give your life to Christ, so that uh, with Christ all things are possible. Let us pray then. Jesus gives to the lepers, most precious gift, the gift of welcome. Cleansing, healing, only one sees, pass the gift to the giver. And that is a foreigner. Today we explore the value of gifts and what they tell us about the giver and ourselves. Father, we just want to thank you. May you bless us as we start this service. In your name I pray. Amen. I would ask my brother, Benny, to come and do the reading of the word that comes from the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Good morning and praise God. I'm really excited to be here and just be able to read the word with you this week and uh, looking forward to Johnson's message. Uh, I encourage you to go back through the, the previous messages and check them out. If, you, if you've missed any, check them out as well. Um, it's like food. So praise God. We'll read, uh, as Johnson mentioned, Luke 17, uh, 11 to 19. It's about Jesus healing 10 men with leprosy. So now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus travelled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Praise God. I feel this is a bit about my Christian faith, actually. It's uh, he's, he's cleansed me a bit from my past life and it's, it's just important for me to continue to keep my eyes focused on him, praising him and and to uh, keep following him. So anyway, that's my thoughts. We'll get Johnson back and just hear his message. It's going to be fantastic. So bring open ears. Praise God. This morning I've decided to share with you on the theme, genuine gratitude. A genuine gratitude leads to thanksgiving. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Jesus was still on his way to Jerusalem, knowing that he had an appointment there in order for his ministry to be completed. You would read it from Luke 9, verse 51, and Luke 13, verse 22. Jesus was traveling along the border between Samaria and Jericho. Galilee was Jewish. Samaria was occupied by Samaritans who were despised by the Jews. If you read uh, Luke 9, verse 52 and 53, the exact location is unknown, but Jesus was near the border, accounts for a Samaritan, a foreigner in the groups of lepers. A foreigner in the groups of lepers. He was also a leper. As he entered the village, the ten lepers stood at a distance and crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. People who had lepros called lepers were required to try to stay away from other people and to announce their presence if they had to come near. It was against the law for lepers to enter a town. Along with the outcasts from society, lepers were also considered unclean. 
meaning that they were unfit to participate in any religious and social activity. So because the law said that conduct with an unclean person made that person unclean too, so lepers were required to call out, unclean, unclean, to keep people away from them. That is in Leviticus 13 verse 45. So people did not want to become ceremonially unclean through any contact with lepers because if you come into contact with a leper, it means you were not going to worship into the temple before you have been ceremoniously had to be uh, performed so that you are able to worship. So the lepers went to the priest who put them in isolation for 14 days, if you were say made clean. So quarantine started long back, 14 days quarantine. When they were brought out, the priest looked over and found that leprosy was spreading. Then the priest told them, you are a leper, or you were now lepers, because you have got this thing. Luke 17 says, as they were going, they were cleansed. As they were going, they were cleansed. I like that part. As they were going, they were cleansed. What does this mean in verse 14? And you would think that they would have come running back to Jesus. They had been lepers separated from others because of their disease. And they had intentionally sought Jesus' help when he came by, crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. On Luke 17 verse 13. So they desperately wanted and needed his help at this moment. His response to them was surprising simply. Go and show yourself to the priest. On verse 14. They were to do what their rules required when healing had to take place. Go to the priest, allow him to declare them clean. That request must have been seemed strange for men who still bore the signs of leprosy. Nevertheless, all ten of them had enough faith to start the journey towards the priest. Certain people who were diseased or disabled are considered untouchable or repulsive. Believers, as believers, we must not be afraid to reach out and touch them with God's love. Ten lepers cried out for mercy. On the edges of our lives, at a distance, within shouting range, stand in need people who loves, whom Jesus loves. What can you do to reach them? There are people who are shouting right now. A street kid caught by drugs, a prostitute whose youth has been destroyed or spoiled, a refugee, an asylum seeker, undernourished and without work, a homeless drifter who is just a kilometer away from where you stay is asking. A block from a church is just asking. And the person is, there is a cry bell audible. Christian, this time they are not saying Jesus, they say, Christian, have mess on me. <laughs> have mess on me. How easy it is for Christians or believers to go on with business as usual in their daily lives when so many people live in desperate need. Poverty and suffering. Because there are so many needs and so few resources. Believers must ask God for direction and depend upon his resources. Work through your church and actively seek some way you can help other people who are struggling in life. Those who are saying, Christians have mess on me. So the biblical text then tells us, and as they were going, they were cleansed, in verse 14. It is striking that they were not healed before going to the priest. Is that they were healed as they went to him. Every step was a step of faith. I can just imagine they are walking slowly at first, but then speeding up as they saw their skin being recovered, being restored. I think they are all moving fast to say, let's go, let's go, let's go, guys. So by so, something is happening. They saw God's work, a miracle in their lives. In that instant, they remind us that seldom does God answer everything before he calls us to follow him. More often, he simply says, go and trust me. So following him is generally a step-by-step -step process of faith. 
So we are moving step by step following Jesus Christ as we are moving. Remarkably, one of the lepers, a Samaritan, whom the Jews would have despised, returned to Jesus to thank him. He glorified God for his healing and he then fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to God on verse 16. We don't know what kept the other lepers from returning to Jesus, however. We don't know what exactly kept them. Ten men had been healed, but only one, a foreigner, referring to them men from Samaria, came back to give glory to God. Jesus was not so much concerned about being thanked as he was about the man's understanding of what had happened. What really has happened to him? He came back thanking him. So the other nine went off free from lepros, but not necessarily free from sin through salvation Jesus could offer. So this one man was freed. So Jesus sent him on his way with the knowledge that his faith has made him well. So he only had been restored the body, his soul, and he had been restored as well. Everything has been restored to him. Because it's not only healing that has happened, but his soul was also restored. Jesus knew ten lepers, and only one of the ten, who was a Samaritan, returned to thank Jesus for what he had done. Jesus then did a second thing for him. He forgive, forgave his sin. Isn't that great? He forgave his sin. The other nine lepers were healed, but were not saved. That's one thing we should know. The nine which went, they were healed, but they were not saved. But this one was healed and he was saved because God forgave his sin. Isn't that great? Thankfulness should be in the Christian heart. Why do you go to church on a Sunday? Why do you go to church on a Sunday as a Christian? Do you go there to worship God and thank him for all he has done for you? Part of your worship is to thank him. About the only thing we can give to God is our thanksgiving. That's the only thing we can give to God to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done to me. Thank you for bringing me to this, uh, to this far. How wonderful it is just to thank him. We are even to make our request to God with thanksgiving. We ought to have a thankful heart towards him. A thankful heart of knowing that this life that I have comes from God. This other leper, he knew that to be what he is, it is as a result of what God has done. So perhaps some returned to their families quickly. Maybe the other nine returned to their families. They were just, they couldn't even, uh, like, they were talking about it. Life was something different. Maybe one went job hunting, maybe looking for a job to say, now I can work. It's possible that the media of that day started to interview this man. Maybe they were asking to say, what happened? Why are you back now so quick? Whether it was that stood the way for them, their lack of gratitude surely showed that their hearts were not turned towards Jesus. Yes, they were healed, but they lacked gratitude. So when we lack gratitude, it shows that our hearts are far away from God. Quite different, though, is the response for the Samaritan. So gratitude has overwhelmed him. So much that he turned back to Jesus, fell at his feet, and simply praised him. How could he not, when Jesus did miraculously restored him to hell, how could he not thank him? I'm telling you to make the best of your situation, to shine as much as you can for Christ wherever you are. Through your life, through your thankfulness, others will be drawn to Christ. When they see that you are somebody who is always thankful, isn't that what it's real about, bringing others to Christ? through all thankfulness. Ten lepers were healed. One came back and was healed and made whole. Ten miracles and only one word of thanks. But that word of thanks is that we remember the most. This passage is more of the one word that came from one person who remembered that to be what he is, it is as a result of what Jesus has done. And that is the word that is in this passage. You see, the greatest thing about this passage is not whether all of the lepers were healed. 
The greatest miracle in this passage is that one heart was healed and received a gratitude adjustment. <laughs> that is exactly the greatest thing about this. So the tenth leper went from a life of misery, from a life of separation to a life of joy and thanks thanksgiving. That would be a great novel, wouldn't it? How that moment changed his life and how it played out in the rest of his life. Something that has happened. Something had happened. All the ten lepers were healed as they were walking away from Jesus. Nine of them kept walking. They kept going. But one of them found that he could not, he couldn't live. His life had changed. Jesus gave him his life back. Jesus restored his skin and probably also his job. His family. And his place in the world. Because he was now considered an outcast. He had to go back to Jesus. So this is a situation when we find that God has done great things in life. We always think of saying, I should go back to Jesus. That's the reason why we come back to worship at church. It's because we say, I need to go back and say, thank you, Lord. Every Sunday, I need to go back. He had to return and give thanks. He had just to. He couldn't keep away. And that's what faith is. That's what faith is. Faith is being unable to stay away from Jesus. <laughs> being unable to stay away from Jesus. That's what is faith. To have faith in Jesus, to be in love with Jesus. There is a connection with you and Jesus. You are unable to stay away. You can't even afford to stay away from Christ on any other day. Because you are connected to Jesus. So Jesus loves you no matter what. Jesus heals you. He puts your life back together. Makes you whole again with the whole life again. No matter what Jesus died and rose. For who? For you and me. That's the plan and still simple truth. Jesus calls us to, his, to be his people, his children, by baptism into his death and into his resurrection. That's the way it works. Faithful life does not ignore the, this truth. If you just ignore what I've mentioned above, then that's not a faithful life. A faithful life doesn't ignore such things. One of them, remember, a Samaritan, who none of the priests. Another issue is that this guy was also saying, go and show yourself to the priest. And being a Samaritan, was he having a priest? <laughs> so it means the priest would not even give him the time of a day at anyhow, turned face to Jesus. Of course he did. How could he not hear his health back? Hear his life back? He would he not, at the very least, Turn a minute or two to turn to around and say thank you. But others didn't. Not even a word. Not even a word. They just went. Gratitude lead to the healing and holiness of the tenth leper. And it can do the same for us as well. When we have the spirit of gratitude in us, of just saying thank you, do you have one person in your life whom you want to say thank you. Can you text a message right now to that person? Can you send a text message to that person without even telling them and you just say thank you for A, B, C, the things that you do into me? Not only one person. If you have got five people, just give them a text message right now as I'm talking. Send them a text message and say thank you for what you are doing in my life. Because there are certain people who have helped you to be where you are today. Gratitude is very important. And all we have to do is to take time for a gratitude adjustment. You and I are called to develop a gratitude adjustment. Where we are able to say thank you. I know sometimes it's difficult. And you don't want to show say thank you because you feel that you depend upon such a person. But saying thank you. That is real a long journey. A long journey of traveling as a Christian. Coming back to say thank you. There are a lot of people who have done great things in your church. That if they were not there, even your church would not stand. Can you 
just text them today. Make a text message and say thank you to them. To be made well, to live well, is to take away and stay by Jesus. Christian life is a constant returning in praise and thanks. In humility and in service. In gentleness and in mess. To the Lord who has saved you. Has healed you. And has made you whole. That is what this Christian life is about. You are always returning to ch church to give thanks. And to say thank you Lord. Thank you for another day. So healing and forgiveness always take us back to Jesus. When I am healed, when I am forgiven, I remember who has done it. So it takes me back to Jesus. Hope always takes us back to Jesus. Faith always takes us back to Jesus. It's not because it's a polite way to go back and say, thank you. It's because you are in love and you can't stay away from Jesus. And then to that church. You can't stay away from Jesus. You are in love with Jesus. You can't stay away. So you're always there. You're always saying, thank you. Even if you find it difficult to, to, to recognize some of the things you can say, which, which you can call as tangible, to say, this is what Jesus did to you. Just the gift of life that you are alive today needs you to say thank you. Just the gift of life. Without taking into consideration other things, you may think you have done it through your own strength. But the gift of life, remember the gift of life, you just need to say thank you. When we are living in COVID-19 situation, where people are dying every day and they are still alive, can't you say thank you? Can't you say thank you to God? So I'm just reminding you to say God has done a lot of things in our lives. And this passage is about reminding us that a lot of people have been healed, have been saved, have, God has done great things in their lives, but they've never come back to say thank you. Is it possible for you to come back to Jesus and say thank you? If you find it difficult to say thank you, why don't you text someone to say thank you on your behalf? <laughs> Maybe you find it very difficult. Text someone to say, do you mind to say thank you on my behalf? Talk to God on my behalf. Because you find it difficult. May God bless you all. As we are being reminded that genuine gratitude leads to thanksgiving. It's a life of thanksgiving. Gratitude adjustment. God help you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for all the things. God of welcome, we bring you the time or the times when we have excluded others. When we have looked at people if they were lepers. When we didn't see past the labels. Help us to see your gifts in all of your people. Make us clean. Master, have mess on us. Have mess on us, Father, for who we are. Have mess on us, Father. We thank you for the gift of life you have given your church the gifts of leading, preaching, and teaching, the creative gifts of those who enhance our worship with music, flowers, art, the gifts of listening and understanding, of a smile and hospitality, the gifts that says you are welcome here. You help us to see past the barriers that restrict and develop new gifts in our lives and others. Father, for all your gifts, we trust and say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, brothers and sisters, I call you again. This is the time just to say thank you. Why do we take offering every seven days? It's Sunday offering. It's an offering. 
Why do we take it? It's my gratitude of saying thank you, Lord, for taking care of me for these seven days. For this one week, every day I walk out of my house, going out to work, coming back, going out different places and coming back. There are a lot of things that happen on a different week. And today I've come back to say thank you for what you've done to me for these past seven days. So it's time for you to say thank you. Count your blessings for this past week. Name them one by one and you'll see what the Lord has done for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you especially for the gift of life. Sometimes we walk as if we hold everything. Sometimes we walk and fail to recognize that you are the giver of life. Sometimes we look down upon others who were created in your own image and we look them with the spirit of saying you are lepers. Help us, Father, that we are all created in the image of God. And it is that image that should be seen on every one of us. As we come before you, Father, with our special gift of saying thank you, we are just being reminded how vulnerable we are without you. So, Father, receive our offering. Bless it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let me share grace. Thank you for all that you are and for the gifts you brought to worship today. Now get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.